Right, this is Armour from Leapfrog Combat TV. I'm here with Christian Knowles and we're going to talk about everything that happened at Royal Combat. By all accounts, Royal Combat was a massive success. A great show to kind of kick off after the COVID period. So first Christian, how are you feeling? Yeah, really good. Thank you very much Amir for coming today. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, yeah, feeling really good. Um, how, was, um, how was Saturday? So it was uh, a success, like you said. Um, packed out and uh, I think everybody really enjoyed being back at a fight show. It seemed that way anyway. After like a long break as well, yeah. it must have been nice relief. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not knowing whether we could go ahead, if we'd be able to, uh, things like that. There's lots of challenges. But that's the first question that I've actually got for you and it's um, what challenges did you face putting on this show? Because it wasn't just like this, the normal kind of stuff, you had a whole whole world of other kind of problems that you've had to deal with. How difficult was it putting this particular show on? Uh, I think I think the main the main challenge was actually knowing whether we'd be able to go ahead again. I think it was only the week before the show that we actually were confident that it was going to go ahead. So um, so that I think was the biggest challenge: working with the venue, working with the council, um, making sure that they were happy with everything. Uh, a lot of paperwork uh, going through red tape and. And doing what you have was to do. Was there a lot of sleepless nights, you know, the stress of having so many fighters getting ready to fight and yeah. not knowing what Boris is going to say? Yeah, yeah, frustration, but just trying to focus on the goal, trying to keep positive. Same as what you do when the, the, the guys, the boys and girls are in fight camp, uh, when there's little things, little niggles and things like that, you've got to try and focus on the good and, uh, and the, um, the end goal, really. Uh, in terms of the fights, did you have most of these fights matched up beforehand or was it literally just in the last couple of months? Uh, I, think, one... I think a few were matched up beforehand um, and, and a lot of them changed actually that were matched up beforehand because of the time lapse from pre-Covid to after Covid or not that we're through Covid but you know what I mean. Um, but uh, just lots of fighters wanting to compete and uh, and, and so we match, we always match uh, more fights than, than required, obviously because of pullouts and illness and whatever, whatever. But um, no one, we had, I think, one pullout. So uh, we ended up having a really big card, but I think everybody enjoyed that. You're quite a, a good in terms of matchmaking. Obviously, I've been to the show before as well, and the matchmaking is really good. But was it a different challenge this time? Because you've had like no one fighting for so long, then you're not quite 100% sure what state the fighters are in when they're coming into the ring. Is that like a different thing that you need to think about this time? I think, I think because, uh, I think because of how well I know the guys, uh, the gyms, the fighters. I think, uh, I think that made it a lot easier for me to, to know what was what. So how do you feel that show went? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really happy with it. So. Um, from the fights now, from what I've heard, is there's a lot of excellent, excellent fights. If you had to pick three fights that really stood out for you, what three fights? I'm going to put you on the spot here. I yeah? think um, I so think I'm, I'm going to mention more than three because there were so many really good ones. But um, obviously, the main event. I think uh, watching two of the best in the world go at it like they did, uh, it was just uh, and being heavyweights as well, it was just phenomenal to phenomenal to watch. Um, Really, really good fight for the uh, WBC world title and for the Raw Combat League world title. Uh, that was that was just incredible. Um, Chef and Charlie Guest, uh, Sevket from mine and Charlie Guest from Shinkick, like two technical wizards, and it was really good to see uh, them two fight. Um, John Crawley and Francesco Tiano. Um, for the British title, John actually stepped in for one of his um, one of his gym mates who who um, had a family problem. Stepped in, and John John was awesome, um, stepping in and taking that opportunity at the last minute. Francesco's experience and strength just showed uh, later on in the fight, but that was really impressed with that. Um, and then Jim won eighty. And Rough Diamonds, Dan Howard and Ryan. Oh, apologies, apologies, but they, they were phenomenal. That was early in the show. 
um, Team, Ch Team Chaos and Shaolin. They, they had two boys on, phenomenal right at the beginning of the show. Um, I guess it's tough remembering all of it because like, um, I was getting messages left, right and centre how, how amazing the show was. Yeah. That would have been a tough one. I've got um, maybe another one on your spot a little bit, right? So, Lyndon and Matt's fight was quite close. Yeah. It was, um, I've seen footage of it and it was excellent. Yeah, excellent. Is that fight. one that you might consider doing again? I'm trying to. I'm trying to get the rematch for September 24th. Uh, we'd love that fight. Um, the guys have said that they'd uh, give us the rematch, so hopefully I can make that work for Raw in September. Nice, that would be quite good, because both of them yeah. are quite legends of the sport, yeah. so that would be a really, really inter entertaining one. So out of all the fights, so you mentioned all the fights that you were quite impressed with, was there a performance by a fighter, maybe male and female, that really stood out for you, that you was... Um, yeah, that stood out for you. There's, there's two more fights. I'm so sorry, but there's two more no, no, fights no, I've no, just no, thought no, of. Go for it, do, uh, do Tom Hubert um, and uh, Mike Coulier, great fight, really technical fight. Uh, Tom from Soxai, one of my old fighters, Dan Bowie, and um, Mike, they, they fought fantastically, really good fight. Uh, and also Chanel and Hannah Turner, Chanel Dyer and Hannah Turner, the girls representing the girls in great fashion, really good technical display, really enjoyable fight. Um, oh my goodness, there's another one, Steve Bushell from <laughs> Nemesis and Luke Coleman. Uh, Steve came out of the traps, uh, gave Luke an eight count early on in the fight. Luke managed to clinch and, and turn the fight around, but a lot of people uh, are, are swaying that to be fight of the night, so I'm glad I mentioned that one. There were so many, so many great fights, so many great performances. It just shows how good the card was, wasn't it? Mm. But does it not make it uh, a little bit difficult for you now because you kind of set the benchmark, innit? So your next show... It's got to be good. The to pressure's be. on. <laughs> but that's what you want. You want the pressure. Yeah, you yeah. want the pressure to, to make you aim high and, and yeah. work hard. It must be a good feeling as well in the sense that, you know, like, there's a bit of kind of element of fear not obviously when you put previous shows on, but with this one, to know what the fighters were going to bring after mm. such a long break, so they mm. might make weight, but are they coming with that same intensity? Uh, and from all accounts, it seemed like it was bang on. They were so professional, like it, it was the easiest way in I've ever done. Everyone was so on point, everyone was so like professional on time and eager for the opportunity. It, it was a pleasure, nice. really was, yeah. Nice. So let's put you on the spot again, right? So I want you to pick uh, one female fighter that stood out for you um, and one male fighter that stood out for you on, on the whole card. It's got to be Chanel Dyer. Um, her attitude to the sport, always wanting to compete, always pushing herself. Also competing in the MMA and being able to transition. Yeah. A lot of people would think you can't do that, but she does it and she's done it really well. She fought beautifully um, against one of my favourite female fighters in the country and got the win. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a pretty impressive fight. She's got so much energy. Yeah. I think um, Andre did an interview for us. And um, what did she, did she call her Hannah? She call her Hannah Brady. She responded to Hannah Brady. I think they've had a bit of back to back and forth, actually. So I need to ring jo John Pot, see, oh, see if we can get yeah, that on. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. That yeah. would be really yeah. good. She goes something like, what did she say? She said, um, I'll fight you today, tomorrow, or yesterday. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we got into you a little bit oh. too uh, too late after the celebration, oh. but that was cool. And your male fighter, who's your male fighter? Um, oh, there was just one, so, so many. many. You got to pick one, man. Go on. I've got to pick one. You've got to pick one. Yeah. A male yeah. fighter, a male male performance. Just someone that you think really stood out. There's so many different reasons why I'm getting a few names. Go on, go on, check in English. Last <laughs> So, I think Francesco Tiano, just for the skill, uh, yeah, just for the skill and how he approached the fight. John was really defensive, but not in a negative way, uh, in a quite positive way, he was, he was countering, and it didn't sway Francesco and he managed to solve the puzzle that John and Rob, um, Rob Allen had created. I think I might have to give it to Frankie, but then 
as a as a brother, my brother Lyndon, I think uh, um, his performance was unreal. He didn't get the he didn't get the, the decision, but the performance was fantastic. His opponent for coming back from being dropped in round two, Matthias, and being able to score uh, in the later rounds, like props off to, to Matthias. Um, Chef, the way he um, put the fire out on Charlie Guest, that was a great performance. Oh, I can't narrow it down to one. That's fine, that's fine, you just ruined my question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. I think it's good, it's good that we had so many performances. And as a, like a fan of the sport, it excites me as well because you kind of want to see these guys now perform again, see them fight again. Even the ones that maybe didn't come out with a victory, you want to see them fight again because you know there's, there's something special about them. I, I, was, um, I watched Francisco's interview and you know the joy that he has, you know, like yeah. afterwards, you can kind of see the release all the stressing stuff will not be able to fight for so long. He's such a great energy, like from day one, came over from Italy to work in England, uh, didn't know any Muay Thai, he was in the gym, fell in love with it, training twice a day, going and being a brickie, uh, nine till five, nine till six, but training in the morning and night. Um, and he's only been fighting like two, I think with COVID, maybe three years and he's achieved so much. And he's just great for the, the boys and girls in the gym, always helping out the others. Yeah. Great, great guy. So, obviously, I leave for, we give you the difficult questions, right? So we can give you another one. Um, and this is a tough one. Uh, you can pick more than one. So, for you, if you had to put Fight of the Night on one of those fights, which one? And, yeah, and you can do more than one if you wish. So, I think we're going to give it to Steve Bushel and Luke Coleman. Oh, okay, nice. Mm. And why, why would you keep it? Just, uh, just because Steve started so well and so strong, it looked like it was, uh, it was finished, it looked like the fight was over. Luke managing to dig deep and, uh, and turn the result around. Massive feat. Nice. So one, um, last couple of questions, and one that I'm really kind of interested in. So there's a lot of fights on the card. Was there any like um, like a new fight or someone that's kind of bursting on the scenes type of thing? You know, someone new that we should be watching out that you're really impressed to. Yeah, there was two actually that fought each other. Joseph, Joseph cousins from Joseph Joseph cousins from Shaolin, and Oscar Keane from uh, Team Chaos uh, was incredible fight. I think both guys are teenagers still, wow. uh, 19, 18. And the fight from the first bell was was just fire. They really went at it, um, really close. Uh, it wasn't. It, it was a split decision. A lot of people thought the result should have gone the other way, but both boys are great. They've got huge futures. When you get a fight like that, where there's um, a lot of dispute over the decision, it kind of just highlights how close that particular fight mm. was. So yeah, definitely. I'm gonna keep an eye on those two as well. Yeah. That's really good. Um, so what's next? There's um, another show that's already being announced. Yeah, 24th of September. So, um, is there any thing you can hit towards us? Any kind of stuff that we can look at for? What kind of fighters will we expect to see back? Um, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually working on some big fights uh, with the current situation abroad. I'm hoping maybe I can get a few of the others that are contracted, a few of the big names from the gym that are contracted on other promotions, try and get them on Raw. Um, maybe try and persuade Alex Bublaya to stay for a little bit longer. Be great to get our Raw World Champion back, it, uh, back in the Raw ring. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big, it's yeah. Gonna be big, yeah. Cool. Um, before we end this, is there a message that you would like to give to the fans that came to the show and has been supporting Raw throughout this show and previously? Just thank you so, so much for your support. It means the world. Uh, thank you from myself and the fighters. Without you guys, there'd be no platform for them to, to showcase their skill. And uh, we're just going to get better and better. So uh, stick with us, please. And anyone you want to shout out that's kind of helped you out, um, 
on the day. So, thank so you. my business partner, Katie Rishover, she's uh, she's the brains of the operation. So massive thank you to her uh, and all of the team. Like there's so many, the guys that help us backstage, the, the, the girls and boys that help us backstage, you're just all fantastic. So thank you so much. Christian, and thank you for taking the time. Thank to you so us. much. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you for popping uh, down. We hope to be there for the next rule. It's show. been a pleasure. And yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Take care, man. Thank, thank you. you.